you hear music in my ears? I don't know if that means it hasn't started yet. Okay, maybe that. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an interesting experience uh, presenting without um, knowing, <laughs> knowing who's there. But anyway, hi, um, my name is Peter Pelberg. Uh, I work as a product manager on the editing team. Um, and today I'll be presenting on the behalf of our team um, talking about how might we put policies um, in people's hands uh, while they're in the midst of editing. So I'm gonna go, oh, beautiful, thanks. Um, so we're gonna talk about a project uh, that actually um, kind of first emerged in our minds uh, two years ago at Wikimania actually in 2021. Um, so this kind of is gonna uh, talk about how that idea has evolved and taken on actual uh, form. Thank you very much for setting up the, uh, the camera. So edit check as we're calling it um, is an effort to offer people actionable feedback um, about policies um, while uh, they're editing. And um, the way that edit check uh, currently works is that it, um, it prompts you to add sources um, specifically newcomers and people who are just learning to edit um, when they forget to do so themselves. So this is a, a little prototype. You see someone adding new text. Uh, they go to hit publish. They didn't realize or forgot to add a reference. And then uh, the mobile visual editor is gonna prompt them to do so. Um, they're presented with the normal kind of citation experience. Um, and then they're off to hopefully publishing their edit um, accompanied with a reference. Um, and that's, that's the first version. Um, and um, this, let's see if I can advance, here we go. And this, this idea um, kind of uh, is a descendant of, I think, ideas that have been, you know, floating around the movement for at least five years. Um, but like I was mentioning, it really took shape uh, two years ago at Wikimania um, in 2021. And we had this session called Software in the Future of Editing. And we brought together volunteers uh, and staff members uh, to kind of ask this question of, you know, how might we evolve our software uh, to help newcomers make edits that actually align with our policies um, and grow into thriving contributors? Because one of our hypotheses was that policies were just kind of out of reach or um, just even outside the minds of people uh, when they're in, in the midst of, of editing our projects. And this uh, kind of the thing that really brought uh, this project into sharp focus for us is coming to realize that while we've done a real, you know, a bunch of really great work uh, simplifying technically how to contribute, um, the actual policies and expectations and conventions uh, haven't really made their way into the software fully. Um, we've got uh, we've got inline comments, we've got edit notices, we've got um, abuse filters, there are template talk page messages, there are kind of a bunch of messages on the periphery of our editing experiences, but in terms of actually making their way and affecting the uh, steps and workflows themselves, they haven't really fully made themselves all the way there yet. And that's that's really what this project is about. And it, it feels so crucial um, because we find this pattern where guidance kind of comes at the wrong moment. You know, it's either too soon where you're like, forget the instructions, <laughs> I'm just gonna click edit and do this thing. Or maybe it's too late. You've already published an edit that someone reverts or, you know, you published a new article that someone deletes and then you have an explanation on your talk page. And by that point you're like, am I really going to invest the time and energy into to learning how this thing works? It seems like there's so many instructions. And the impact of that is kind of twofold. Uh, newcomers feel unwelcomed and they question whether Wikipedia is a place where they belong and experienced volunteers kind of repeat themselves and grow tired. Same people or, you know, people keep coming to our projects, making the same mistakes. How do we kind of stem the flow of this? And we just don't think this is working out for anybody. And, and that kind of brought us, you know, so what's happened since we've kind of named this issue, identified its impact, 
Um, and what have we been up to for the past couple of years? Um, we haven't solely been working on this, but um, you know, we've gotten together as a team and sketched out a bunch of ideas and kind of want to share you how uh, that demo that you saw up front came to be. And so over the past 11 months, we've had a bunch of conversations on Wiki. Um, we've had 11 community conversations um, with volunteers around the movement, um, specifically focusing on uh, volunteers, English speaking volunteers and French speaking volunteers. Um, the reason for that is um, we're really centering uh, people editing from within Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the newcomers um, in this project. And most often those are the two projects uh, that they're contributing to most. And through this process, a couple kind of principles emerged about um, really guiding how we approach the experience that you saw. Um, one is really embodying this idea of um, no firm rules. Um, you know, the interface is gonna invite people to make choices and ideally um, the interface creates an expectation that you are empowered to decide whether the invitation it's presenting with you to you is relevant or not. But ideally, it doesn't create an experience where people start to feel like, oh, um, I'm doing something wrong if um, this is telling me I should do this thing, or it doesn't give you the freedom and flexibility to uh, do something different because there's a reason that you think that the edit you're making uh, doesn't need to um, follow the, the kind of convention that the interface is suggesting. Um, the other thing is encouraging interaction. I think one of the things that we heard so often in our community calls, specifically with volunteers who have been traditionally excluded and underrepresented on our projects, is that oftentimes they make a contribution and it feels like there's no opportunity for a dialogue. Um, this can sometimes come up when you're creating a new article and you don't even have an opportunity to articulate um, why something or someone might be notable. Um, it just looks like on its face uh, that content is deleted. And so ideally with this interface, we're um, providing context on both sides. People who are new have, you know, this understanding and expectation that this is not like every other place on the internet where self-expression is centered. Um, there are expectations, there are policies that help Wikipedia um, remain and continue to grow to be this vital resource that everyone can depend on. And on the side of experienced volunteers, you know, it's helpful to know what motivated someone to make an edit, why they thought the contribution they're making may not necessarily need a citation. Maybe their person they're writing about is someone um, who is on a topic that just has been you know, again, traditionally underrepresented within the sources that um, our projects typically deem to be reliable. And shouldn't there be room in our patrolling conversations for edits of that sort? Um, I'm not going to go into each one, but uh, it was really valuable to be in conversation and surface these principles that we can hold ourselves accountable to imbuing the software with. Um, the other thing that we kind of learned is trying to figure out, well, what is the right moment to offer people feedback? Um, kind of like I mentioned, we seem to be really well practiced with giving people a bunch of obstruction, obst instructions up front, almost said obstructions, which anyway, um, instructions up front. And then we also um, are pretty good at giving people feedback after the fact, uh, once they publish an edit. So one of the things that we were looking at in our design process is trying to think about when is the right moment to provide people feedback. Is it in the moment when they're looking over their edit before they hit publish, which you see on the left? Is it just as they hit publish before they hit save um, while they're writing an edit summary? Um, is it after the fact? You know, do we want, is it um, more likely that people are going to respond to feedback if they're offer, uh, offer guidance about how they might improve an edit that they just made? Um, so those were some of the questions that we have been asking ourselves. Um, and the hypothesis real, really here is, you know, can we time feedback so that it arrives in a way that it feels like um, encouraging, empowering, and not punishing? Um, I don't know if this metaphor will track for y'all, but sometimes um, 
we talk on the team of like, there's a difference between you cooking and that ingredient that you're um, wanting to add, just like arriving in your hand at that right moment, just as you need to, let's say, like put it in the, the pan or the wok and um, someone kind of laying out the recipe um, all at once at the top before you've even chopped your vegetables. It's like, are you going to be able to remember that thing or even want to know about that instruction that is so specific to this thing that's further along. And, and so the idea is that if we can time feedback to come at the right moment and crucially equip people with tools uh, to apply it, then maybe people will make edits they're proud of and projects um, actually deem useful. I am looking at the time and I kind of want to talk. So I'm going to kind of cruise through these last ones. Um, so anyway, the two of the ways that we're thinking about evaluating the success of this project and by no means the only ways, but we're basically trying to lower the proportion of edits, um, new content edits that are reverted and increase the proportion of those edits that actually include um, references. And um, in terms of where we are now, I love this, this sketch, uh, Pal. Um, who's a designer on the language team. Uh, if you've never met him, he draw this amazing diagram of like what the software development process looks like or kind of looks like in actuality and that's what you're seeing. But anyway, we're in the refinement stage. Um, we're gonna have an initial release, hopefully pretty soon. And then we'll probably find ourselves somewhere back in that tangle, um, refining the feature based on um, what we learn about how people actually use it. And in terms of like, zooming out how are we thinking about this year um, this kind of come back comes back to that moment thing that i was referring to um, we kind of think that moderation or instruction happens right now either at the very beginning of an edit or at the end and after you publish and with this project we're really trying to sprinkle in this feedback um, in moments so that it's it's you know, it arrives at the right time. And so this year we'll be experimenting with a few checks. That's what these yellow bars represent. Um, and we have a prototype that we've been talking with volunteers about for, I wanna say like six weeks, six weeks now, there's so much incredible feedback of which I'm happy to go into, um, but it's, it's available for you to try. Um, and that's pretty much what I had prepared. If any of this kind of like, you know, sparked a question or Peter, you said something and it, it wasn't fully clear what you meant. We can definitely go into that now. Um, there's also kind of two key ways that you can kind of remain updated and also participate in future conversations and there, there, uh, the links are there. So, um, yeah, if there's anything that this brought to mind, like, oh, this is energizing or like, have you ever looked at abuse filters? This sounds very familiar. Um, I'm here for it all. Um, and thanks for uh, kind of like, you know, deciding to uh, to spend your very scarce Wikimania time with me and edit check. So I am gonna pause here. If there are any questions or reactions or feedback, let's do it. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. How, this is a very surreal experience because I'm looking at you <laughs> at your back, but yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hi, cool. I'm Johanna. Uh, I work at Wikimedia Deutschland, Wikimedia Germany, and I run the um, technical wishes survey there. And I just wanted to mention that in our last survey in 2022, um, there was also a focus area that was up for vote uh, that was called something like um, give help while editing. So that sounds very mm. similar, I think. And that actually uh, made second place. So that was like, yeah, not the one that won, but uh, pretty close. So there's, um, I would say, definitely a need for that in German Wikipedia. And um, I wanted to ask, though, like the things that were mentioned for this focus area specifically were, were about typography also, or like when people, stuff that gets reverted, something like, oh, you know, use the wrong quotation marks, for instance, or mm. something else like. Also, some things that are specific to the creation of articles, like um, from the mistakes that people typically make when they create a new article. Is this something that's also you see falling under this project somehow? That's a great question. Um, in yes, yes, uh, yes, and yes, and no. So I'll, I'll unpack that. So, yes, insofar as I think. Um, 
conceptually, absolutely, that the idea of providing people uh, feedback who are creating new articles uh, absolutely falls <laughs> uh, falls within the idea of this 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 project. Um, I think no is maybe too strong of a word. Whether we'll implement it as part of this um, kind of fiscal year is TBD. Actually, if uh, you were at the last session and saw Kirsten from the growth team, that's actually something that our two teams are talking about. Is there a world in which um, there are checks that are presented to people um, who are just creating new articles? So I can imagine something like, um, it needs to have this minimum number of sections. It needs to have this minimum number of wiki links. Um, based on the number of paragraphs, each one of these should have references. So absolutely, like you're right there. Yeah, cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the question. Yeah, totally. Now this is weird for us because I'm looking at you over there, but your face yeah. is actually that side. But anyway. Hey, Peter. Um, I'm going to ask you a question because this is a conversation we've been yeah. having. Um, but I wanted yes. to talk to the side of um, kind of moderator creativity, you know, how how you're thinking about um, how these things might not be foundation-defined checks, but like community-defined checks and, um, yeah, where that conversation is going for you. Yeah. <laughs> Great question, Sam. Wonder where it came from. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, one of the things, one of the things that, I think that Sam, Kirsten, and myself have kind of, um, yeah, have kind of talked about is, yeah, how might we make something that enables volunteers to define checks for themselves? So, uh, Johanna, you were articulating, you know, if we were to kind of abstract the statement or the question that you asked is kind of a, a bit of an if this, then that statement, like, you know, if uh, someone with this, uh, of this account age, with this number of edits um, is attempting to create a new article, then um, that new article should have X, Y, and Z. And if any of X, Y, and Z thresholds are not met, then present them with this message or this feedback or this call to action. And so in an ideal world, if this project proves successful is that that um, kind of configurability that kind of creativity is something that lives on the wikis because um, personally i don't think this project is super exciting if the editing team and, and product teams are needing to write each one of these individual checks um, so that's something that we're trying to learn uh, through the course of this project and um, you know, something that Kirsten, Sam, and myself are actively talking about is like, okay, we're each, each of our teams are building these bits of functionality that when you kind of compose them together could potentially create the kind of creativity that I think Sam was alluding to. And abuse filter is one of those existing um, features that uh, we draw a lot of inspiration on just because of how much um, yeah, how, how much kind of expression it's unlocked for volunteers. The question is, can we deliver feedback of that sort that's, um, you know, appears earlier and, and um, uh, comes as more of a helping hand and less as a, um, well, maybe not. Anyway, I'll pause there. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Um, if there's no question, something that I've been trying to think through, and I don't know how much time we have, is someone brought up a really good question on the talk page actually yesterday. And they were like, all right, so you're, this is me summarizing them, but they were saying, okay, so you're going to, if effective, we're going to have more people adding references. Um, but those references could be extremely unreliable. Um, and it's more difficult to patrol an edit that adds new content that lacks a reference than an edit that adds new content and has a reference. And so something that I've been thinking through over the past, you know, just day or so is like, how, how will we detect if that's happening? Are we going to need to rely on people manually reporting that's the case? 
Um, so that's something I'm trying to sit through or sift through is, yeah, what happens or how might we, um, yeah, how might this not in the short term turn into actually more work for moderators because they're, uh, you know, less clear cut cases of whether a, a new content edit is um, productive or not. Um, yeah. quick thought about that actually um so yeah yeah talk to me yeah one example you might look to from from the past is the one lib one ref editing campaign that, that i used to be involved mm. in running that, that i think we still run from the foundation um the idea was to encourage um librarians to come to wikipedia and add a citation right to something that needed it um the the campaign got a little bit gamified right so there was kind of leaderboards mm. statistics who was adding the most citations and in some communities that we engaged um, for, for those new editors, um, we sort of saw that behavior, right? That there was sort of like shortcuts or a misunderstanding about what a reliable source was. They were adding any source because that meant they got their, their point on the leaderboard. Mm. And so there's probably some folks involved with that campaign that will have sort of interesting thoughts about how, um, how they might have tried to solve that problem or how we uh, you know, try to encourage or educate those, those editors about what is or isn't a reliable source. That might be a, a useful place to go. Mm, great spot. Yeah, I hadn't considered that. Thank you, Sam. Um, I will probably ask you in Slack at some point later who a good person to talk to about that would be. Um, cool. Well, thanks, whoever is there. Uh, thanks for coming. And I hope, what is it? I guess it's like 1145 or 1245. So maybe lunch is close. But um, yeah, I hope the rest of the hope the rest of the day is great. Uh, good to see everyone. And um, I think I I think I close my laptop now and go to sleep. <laughs> hey, Kirsten. Good night, Peter. All right, good night, y'all. Or have a good day, y'all.